What's up, guys? Welcome to this week's episode of Beyond the Press. This week, we have Atlanta Hawks guard DeLon Wright. DeLon, welcome to the show, bro. How you doing? Thanks for having me. No problem, man. Uh, where are you at right now? Are you in Atlanta? Yeah, I'm in Atlanta. Um, we start camping like two or three days, so just getting ready for that and um, chilling out. Man, how are you liking the city so far? I love it. Um, I had never really done anything when we would come play here, so... This mm -hmm. you know past week, I got to see some of the city. So, so far, I'm uh, loving what I see. Yeah, Atlanta's one. I mean, I'm from, I'm born and raised in Atlanta, so I'm okay. very, very, fam very familiar with it. Yeah, um, it's very cultured, man. Like you can, you, it's, 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 it's something there for everybody. So, yeah. I'm sure you won't have a problem finding things to do there. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's let's just uh, jump right into it, man. Um, so you're a California kid, man, born and raised in Los Angeles, right? Yes, sir. Born and, and raised. Uh, Kind of talk to me about your journey growing up playing basketball there, man. Did you play AAU? How was high school basketball for you? Kind of just talk about, kind of start there for me. Um, yeah, so I've played AAU since about, I would say, 10 and under. Um, I was playing in a local park around my, my neighborhood, and uh, some guy, he came into the park and recruited, like, two of the players. So, um, you know, I kind of played with him uh, for two years, and then – I moved on to a different team, so on, you know, up until high school. And then um, high school, I went to the same high school as my brother. Um, mm -hmm. Russell Westbury went there also. Uh, what high school is that? Uh, Luzinger. It's in uh, Lawndale, oh, okay. California. So uh, mm -hmm. I had a good high school career there. Um, then I went to prep school. Didn't work out there. I had to do two years in junior college in San Francisco. That oh, worked wow. out. I was able to transfer to Utah and uh you know that worked out also and then I, that's how I got drafted so 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 you got kind of an, an incredible story man that's uh that's actually unbelievable I was gonna ask you were you were you one of those kids who were you know highly recruited in AAU and like how was that whole process for you like were you one of those guys that were like on a lot of people's board for a lot of the big colleges or was this kind of like something that happened for you no I wasn't I played on some good teams but um I will always get overlooked um, they yeah. always say you're too skinny. He's not quick. You know, they always find something to say. So, um, absolutely. That motivated me to just, you know, get better at the things that they said I was good at. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I was, uh, I was talking to some people earlier, man. Like, I, on my AAU team, I played in, I played with Georgia Stars as the EYBL team, but I was the lowest rated out of like all the, the top 100 kids on my team. So I was always like overlooked or I guess undervalued. Um, but that's kind of how my recruiting process was, too, also. Like, I didn't have many big-name offers. I mean, I went to Clemson, obviously, and I committed to Clemson my my uh, junior year of high school, so super, super early. It's so like before yeah. Peach Jam, before all those major tournaments. Um, so I, I kind of understand what you, where, where you're coming from with that stuff. Um, was your AAU team an EYBL team or just like a, a local team? No, nah, I'm older, so it was no EYBL when I was Oh, up. man. <laughs> 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 no, we're about the same age. I'm 28, bro. We're about the same age. Damn, you probably was the was year before. Yeah, it might have. I don't know. I, it wasn't on EYB. I don't think when I was playing. I'm like, uh, who's who was my year? Um, like the, Kyrie the Irving. First year. Oh, okay. Well, the first year of EYB, I think Bradley Bill's team won it. The St. Louis Eagles. Oh, see, yeah, that yeah. year behind me. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, you just missed it then. Oh, okay. I was Adidas though. I was Adidas team. So I was, uh, I was uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, makes sense. Okay. And obviously you went to Utah, man. How, how was that whole situation there for you? I mean, obviously you had success there. The team had success. How was that situation for you? Man, it was great because um, I, when I went to junior college, that's when I really started to get recruited. Uh, so I mm -hmm. had pretty much all the teams that would take junior college players in the country like after me. And um, I went on one visit to Utah and I committed like a week later. And wow. everybody in my family, my older brother, like, like, what are you doing? Like, you didn't go on other visits yet. You still have Gonzaga. You have all these other schools that you're going to go visit on. Mm -hmm. And um, I just told him, like, you know, I just feel like I can play right away here. Uh, why go look at these other schools? And um, it worked out. They were, like, 5 and 25 when I committed there. And everybody oh, was wow. like, what are you doing? Like, it's <laughs> yeah. the worst team in the Pac-12. And, and that was your first just, visit, right? You said your, your first, first and visit? only visit. First wow. and only visit. Um, wow. I didn't you, even finish my ever, full, I'm sorry. No, I didn't even finish my uh I didn't even start my sophomore year of uh college. I did this, you know, the beginning of the year. 
Mm -hmm. So if I would have finished through, I probably would have more school and more offers. Of course. So, so of course, yeah. I want to get it out the way and focus on my sophomore year. That that's what I was saying about me. Like I committed as a junior to, to Clemson. Right. It was my it was my first high major offer, and I remember I went there for a camp, and it just felt right. Like all my friends and family were like, "No, like you need to wait till you're a senior, get all the schools you can." I was like, "Man, like this feels right. Like I, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like I want to do it." And uh, obviously right. I did it, but yeah, not taking any uh, any other visits is crazy, man. I mean, you said Gonzaga was in there too, right? Yeah, the Gonzaga was. They were they were right there. I mean, obviously the situation worked out for you. Do you ever look back on it like maybe I should have went somewhere else or could have went somewhere else? No, not at all. Um, I do wish that I like it was more of a party school. Like I wish that I did go. You to wish school. Utah like, you was? Know, yeah, because you know I hear stories uh, about people going to parties like Monday through Friday and stuff. So man, I kind of wish. Yeah. I wish it was able to do that, but I'm I'm happy with, you know, what I did. I'm sure it was a lot easier to focus there, though. I, I went to a party oh, school, man. Friday, Same. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You're going to find something to fall into, man. <laughs> See, I wanted those problems. I wanted those problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Utah is fine. I've been to Salt Lake uh, plenty of times. I'm actually good friends with Austin. We have a mutual friend together. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty good friends with him. Uh, and so I've been to Utah a lot. Uh, had some fun, fun weekends there. So it's not that bad of a city. No, it's definitely fun. Like I had a good time with the team. We we definitely had fun. I just, you know, it's always that one thing you have to say you wish you can do. So. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how many years did you end up staying there? Two years. Two years. Yeah, and two years, senior year. So you played with Jakob and Kuzma. Yeah, yeah. So y'all had y'all had, had, had a pretty good team. Oh, they were freshmen yeah, we when you okay. Uh Kuz was a, was like a red shirt freshman. We came in together and then Yak, we played together as a freshman. Oh, okay. Nice. He was nice. a freshman. Okay, so so obviously you had a lot of success there. Did you did you always kind of know you were going to be you know going to the NBA, or did this kind of happen out of nowhere? Uh, when I was going into Utah, that was a plan. Um, I was thinking maybe two years, but my brother he was like, "Yo, if you take care of business, you probably only ought to be there one year." And then mm -hmm. that's kind of when a light clicked in my head. And ever since that, you know, when I went in, I was like, "I'm only trying to be here one year." And I almost left, but um. You know, coaches and my mom, they convinced me to stay. So uh, it definitely worked out because I, I helped my draft stock and all that. And I wanted so, to work. So, so did, did it kind of like, when I say that it happened out of nowhere, was it like, were you on draft boards before you got there your first year at Utah? Or so it just, it just kind of happened, man. So like, yeah. at what point, at what point during the season were you like, all right, this is, this is like becoming real for me? Um, I would say probably. Our non-conference, once I mm -hmm. got into Pac-12, um, we, we had a terrible non-conference schedule, but I was, like, shooting, like, 60% from the field, like, some uh -huh. crazy stats. Um, so that's when uh, the scouts started to come out and watch me at a uh, practice before we went into Pac-12. Mm -hmm. And then once we went into Pac-12, that's when they started to come out. And um, I was like, yo, I'm about to leave. Like, And this is your I first year? Yeah, my first year there, yeah. Out of junior college. Like, they they didn't know what I, what to expect from me. Uh huh. Wait. So, so you did two years at Utah, right? Yeah. So you could have left after that first year, essentially. I could have left. I would have been like, like uh, in the second round. That's already having projected. So I, I kind of want. I want to come back and uh, improve that. Mm hmm. That, that's kind of how the uh, kind of how I thought the situation might go for me. Um, right. I uh, so in 2016, I was first team All ACC, Most Improved Player of the Year. Shot 45 percent from three, which is ridiculous. Yes. Um. I was a late first round, early second round pick, you know, at the combine and through all the little testing and all that stuff. Everything was great. And uh, I was like, man, like if I go back one more year, I can probably, you know, get into that late lottery, you know, early first right. round, like early mid uh, first round. And uh, that was kind of my whole thought process going through it. And then uh, my senior year comes and I don't shoot it as well. I think I shoot like 27 percent from three. And I, I end up falling all the way to the 59th pick, bro. So. Just that that thinking, yeah. man. Like obviously the situation worked out for you. It didn't for me. It's just kind of crazy. Like you gotta be very, very cautious. And obviously, uh there are a lot of outside factors also, but it's just interesting to see, you know, we kind of had the same mindset and it worked right. out for you. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's it's always a risk. Um, but uh, you know, sometimes it works for other people, sometimes it don't. Like Yeah, I mean it's all about the journey, always, man. Like Yeah, it's, it's a process. You got your degree, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Exactly, yeah, yeah. that's the that's the bright side yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually I'm playing in Germany right now. I uh, I, th I played against you in I was, I played I was with Cleveland. Say, and I was gonna say that. Yeah, I know I know I played you a couple times. You were like 35 or something. Uh, number four. Four. My bad. I yeah, that's all. No, that's all good. Other dude is 35. Uh, what's his name? 
He just got drafted last year. I forgot his name. Um, man. Uh, Isaiah Okoro Howard? or something? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. But no, I do remember you. Though. Yeah. So so you, you left after the second year. Um, how was the whole pre-draft process and the draft process for you? Did you end up going to the draft? Um, so the pre-draft, I did all of the teams that were like, well, I was projected like 14 to like 30. So I did most oh. of the teams in those, those in that range. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was about 17 total workouts. 17? Um, uh, somewhere close to that. Oh my, wow. Yeah, I did about, about the, uh, that amount. And so I got drafted by the Raptors. But the crazy thing is they, um, so that was my last workout because I ended up getting hurt. Um, uh-huh. They brought in, I think, Jabril Tariq or something like that. I think that's the name from uh, Georgetown. Uh-huh. So they brought him in to work out against me to, like, kind of toughen me up, see how tough I was. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm going at him. Uh, I'm going at him. And he wasn't really in that much shape, like, out in, in my opinion. So right. I blow by him one play, and I'm um, going to lay it up. And he, like, hacks me from behind. Like, he, like, grabs me as I'm about to lay it up. And so I pull my groin. And, oh, um, man. Oh, this is like almost towards the end of the workout. So I'm like kind of pissed because I have, I had three more workouts left uh, with all the Texas teams. So um, after that, they they're talking like, yeah, man, everybody's gonna think we shut you down because we like you so much. And I'm just mm-hmm. laughing it off like, ah, oh, there's no way I'm going 20th to y'all. I'm just like, oh yeah. okay. Oh, wait, they, they were short, saying that to you. Yeah, they were like they were saying uh, that to me. In, uh, that's a good sign. That was a great sign, obviously. Yeah, I, to me, I wasn't thinking nothing of it, and then um, yeah, sure enough, they end up picking me. So. That was just a, it was a crazy story. Um, just being in Toronto and uh, enjoying my time there. People, people from the outside don't really understand, man, what it's like to have 17 draft workouts, man. Like they just, they just hear, oh, I had 17 draft workouts. That's cool. That's fun. But like, bro, I had 11 my last year. Uh, I had six the year before. Mm-hmm. Um, and bro, it, it's, it's crazy. Like you're, you're traveling across the country from workout to workout to workout. You most of the time can't rest, man. It, it's it's a hard process. I uh, right. I did my pre-draft in Vegas at Impact, and okay. um, I think I had three workouts before the combine, mm-hmm. so I had to pack for like literally five weeks of living out of a hotel. So I went three workouts, yeah. then straight straight to Chicago for the combine. I left mm-hmm. I left the combine, and I went from workout to workout to workout, and then I, my last workout was in Denver. So I flew from Denver to New York. For the draft, obviously, and like that whole yeah. process is crazy, man. Like some of these yeah. workouts are tough. Did you ever have yeah. uh was it the Clippers or Boston or Phoenix? Um, I went to visit Boston, but I was hurt. Um, Phoenix, I did the running, the three minute the run. Running. Yeah, that was that was <laughs> tough. Tough, bro. Tough, tough. That one was tough. Yeah, th- uh, that year I I had uh Phoenix, I had uh Clippers, and I had Boston. So I had all those workouts with the three minute run. It was tough. Yeah, those are the only teams I believe that have the three minute runs, and uh, I I miss. Yeah, I only did one. The Clippers, I don't think I. They don't think they had a. They didn't have a first round pick, so we didn't do them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Clippers, I didn't get to do those. Yeah, but those three minute runs are tough, especially at the end of a workout. Tough, bro. <laughs> tough. It, I mean, they're just trying to see, man, how tough you are mentally. Because I, nice. I, I I was in the workout with some guys, man, and they're like, not making it. I'm like, bro, this is crazy. Like, this looks really bad for y'all, bro. Like, yes. Y'all, you got the whole front office there. You like dying on the ground. Like this is crazy. It's <laughs> it's funny straight. though, man. Look, looking back on it, it's funny. No, so no, uh, I agree. All right. So fast forward to the draft, man. Did you end up going to the draft? No. So um, me, I'm I'm so like I was like yeah. I I knew I was getting drafted that day, but I'm like telling myself like yeah, you don't know where you're gonna get drafted. Like <sighs> man, you, don't be in, <laughs> you don't want to be sitting. You don't want to be sitting. Sitting in New York, uh, just waiting for your name to be called, and uh-huh. you just watching everybody else go get their name called. So, um, I was like, uh, I just want to stay home and do it. So, my brother threw a he threw like a big party at a the Hyde Club in LA. Mm-hmm. He had a, a party there, so all of my family and friends were there um, during the draft. It seems like your brother had a pretty uh, big in- impact and influence on you growing up in basketball. How, how was that relationship with you guys? Yeah, man, I would not be here without him. Uh, he's the one that actually got me to go to that junior college in the Bay Area because he was playing. Mm-hmm. He's playing for the Warriors. And um, they had just won state that year. So uh, his driver was like, yo, uh, this your brother's looking for a junior college. They just won state. You should, uh, you know, go look at it. And so that's how I ended up going there. And um, 
you know, from that point on, I, I would say from that year on, he started to bring me, uh, bring me around him and his friends and we would play pickup and, you mm-hmm. know, obviously he's helping me when I'm playing bad. He's cussing me out like, man, like, <laughs> yo, you got to pick it up. Like you're trying to go to the league. Like, yeah. So he definitely influenced me to make it to the NBA and I wouldn't have done it without him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you see a lot of guys who have brothers in the NBA and like the younger brother is always like up and coming also. I think it's just interesting to see like, you you kind of have that blueprint of like how to work, what to do, like how to how to how to treat your body, what to eat. Like you kind of just have that blueprint, and I think that's like super important. You know, um, a guy like it's obviously a lot harder if you kind of don't have that. You don't really know how to navigate the whole sure. process. So kind of having them there along the way definitely helped you. Obviously, in your case, I mean, look at where you are now. I mean, he's been a a big part of your life, obviously. So that's that's, a, that's definitely a good thing to have with you. Yeah, I don't want to give him too many compliments, but yeah, he definitely, uh, <laughs> yeah. He definitely helped me uh, get to where I am. Yeah, he he won a championship with Miami, right? Yeah, he won it his second year. Second year. Were you league. able to? Were you were you able to be a part of it? Oh, second year in the league. Yeah, wow, he was like nineteen. Tough. Yeah, that's I tough. wasn't there because I was playing little league. Um, mm-hmm. I was in like the little league. Uh, it was uh, like when you go to the little league championship uh, when they have them on TV. We we're trying yeah, to make yeah. it there. We were a couple, uh-huh. couple steps away, but I was uh, fairly close to making that. So my parents at, went, at, but I didn't get to go. At that age, did you, did you kind of understand the significance of like him winning a championship, or was it just kind of like, oh, my brother's playing in the, in the finals right now? Like, was it kind of cool to you, or you just didn't really understand it? Um, I would say a little bit of half and half. He was uh, they had so many veterans on that team, so he was in a suit. Uh, he wasn't mm-hmm. actually playing. Um. But I was such a D Wade fan at that time. Like I was just so happy to see like D Wade like uh-huh. blossom into a star. Um, so I was I was hyped. Um, a lot of my friends, you know, they was always Team Lakers. Lakers is they they used to hate on uh, Shaq and <laughs> D Wade. So uh-huh. I was just happy to that they were there. And my brother was about to win a chip, so that was that was exciting. Were you ever? Did you ever get a chance to like meet any of those guys or build a relationship with any of them? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say. Ever since, yeah, the first year, they uh, my brother had like he would have like dinner parties and invite you know, some of the family. And D Way would call would call. Uh, my brother knew how much I loved D Way, so he would mm-hmm. uh, get on the phone sometimes and like just say what's up to me, and I'll be yeah. acting like I'm too cool, or whatever. But really, <laughs> I was excited as hell. Like, yeah, I used to make my whole week just to hear him like like treat me like I was his brother. Mm-hmm. And they're still pretty close to this day. Uh, still best friends. So. No, it's pretty he cool. D, he, he and D Wade are. Yeah, yeah, they they they're still the best of friends. So it's how uh, was the plan? How was the plan against Dwayne Wade? Oh, um, crazy. Um, I I don't know. Uh, I forgot what game. I think it was his last game in Toronto. Like I hit like some pull up threes on him. I'll never shoot pull up threes. Uh-huh. Like, he was guarding me. <laughs> he was guarding me, and um, I just pulled up in transition two times in a row, and uh, just we have a picture of it actually where we're both smiling. Like he's like. He's just laughing it off, but um, that was one of the probably my best moments in the NBA. Really, that moment right yeah. there is crazy. Yeah, I mean, definitely. it's it's, it's kind of cool though for you kind of grow up to be around that and like to obviously build a relationship with him. Then to get to the NBA and to be able to play against him is kind of cool, man. Yeah, one of the surreal moments I would say. Yeah, I so my my rookie season was the the farewell tour for him, and mm-hmm. uh, for me, I was just like, man, like I I grew up like watching this guy, like it's like like what right. am I doing here? Like this is crazy. <laughs> I remember my first game at Staples Center. I grew up a Kobe fan, like Shaq and Kobe right, Lakers, right. all that. And uh, my first game at Staples Center, I was like walking in the tunnel and I was like, man, this is crazy. Like, how, how did yeah. I do this? Like, right. The, right. It, it's so hard to get there, man. Like, not many people get to experience that. And like, it was just a blessing, bro. It's just like, wow. Like, all the hard work I put in, everything that I've had to deal with, you know, it's kind of crazy that I've gotten here. And I'm sure you kind of got that same feeling also. I still, to this day, still sometimes I have to, like, yo, what a. How am I still here? Not still here, but like, how did I get here? Mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just one of those things that I, I feel like it should never go away. If you're here, you shouldn't never take this for granted. Um, you know, this is a blessing to be able to play, you know, in the NBA. Mm-hmm. So back to the draft, man. So you you went twentieth, right, to Toronto? Twentieth, yes. 20th? Yes. Okay, and so Toronto for me, I mean, obviously you played there, but I. It has a very, very good reputation around the NBA as far as like the front office and the management and how they treat the players. And they kind of look for like a certain guy, like they they go after good people, like genuine good right. people. 
Um, right. Like, how, how was that kind of building your first, you know, four seasons in the NBA? Like, how how did that help you? I mean, I know at, I was drafted by San Antonio, and mm -hmm. they 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 love guys who are like on time, hard workers, yes sir, yes ma'am type of guys, like yes. really straightforward guys. And I feel like Toronto's kind of the same way. Like, do you think being at a place like that? you know, kind of help you mold you into who you are today? For sure. Um, it definitely taught me how to be a professional. Um, my first two years, I didn't play too much. So mm -hmm. I was able to learn from uh, Cal Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, Corey Joseph, uh, who else? We have Serge Ibaka. Those guys are uh, Louis Scola. We had so many good pros that mm -hmm. um, they, they probably didn't teach you like, oh, you should do this. But they, they led by example, um, mm -hmm. getting work on their body you know, putting them extra shots. It was a lot that uh, I was able to learn from these guys. And now I am, I'm the vet now on the team. So it's crazy. <laughs> um, so no, I know. I'm just trying to do that. <laughs> I'm just trying to do that, do that for the young guys, uh, show them how to put in the extra work and, you know, have the results show for itself. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite season in Toronto so far? Probably my third year. Um, that was really when I like I would say had my breakthrough year. Um, mm -hmm. for, me and Fred would kind of split. Fred Van Fleet would split time in the backcourt uh, on the second unit, mm -hmm. and he had got hurt uh, that first round before the first round against the Wizards. Uh -huh. So I was, you know, I had more of a role in that series, and I pretty much played the whole game guarding John Wall and Bradley Bill, and we made it out of the first round. So um, that was kind of like my coming out party with them. Uh, you know, needed me to step up. So that was probably mm -hmm. my favorite year. And, you know, I feel like that's the most memorable year that I had with them. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, man. Most people don't understand also is like the, the NBA is like all about confidence, man. So I'm sure going yes. through that, being able to have success in the playoffs, man, like that, that could like make or break a player, bro. Like it's For sure. the, the margin between being good and, and being out of the league is so small, man, because so many guys yes. are right here. So and also, like I said, man, about the thing about Toronto, like wanting good people, like that stuff matters too to so many teams, man. Because that at that level, everyone's good. But like, what sets you apart? Like, what makes you better than the next guy? And and a lot of the times, for most teams, it's being a good person, you know, working hard, uh, being ready when your when your name is called, you know. Um, so I mean, it was good that you got to experience that and um, kind of propel you to you know where you are now. Um, for sure. But so you were you were traded uh, the next season, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. Yeah, the all star uh, the deadline. Yeah, how how was that whole process, man? Like, did you kind of did it come out of nowhere, or was it like you kind of heard some trade no. rumors, the agent, nothing? No, so uh, no, no, I will explain. Um, so during the year, um, so we my first three years was Dwayne Casey the head coach, and then Nick mm -hmm. Nurse was the head coach my fourth year. So then that's the year we got Kawhi. Um, so my minutes were like up and down that whole year. Like they were just. Up yeah. and down, up and down. I'm like, yo, this is my contract year. Um, this is the time where I should be, you know, on the floor a lot, uh, balling out. So towards the um, towards the deadline, my minutes were still like up and down, like up and down. Um, so me and my agent were like, uh, yeah, it's time to find, you know, a team where I can play a lot more and show show what I can do. So um, mm -hmm. I think we had like Orlando and Detroit because uh, the guy that drafted me, Jeff Waldman. He was in Orlando. So we were like, me and my agent, and we were working on getting there. So I think at the deadline, they had a deal for me to go to Orlando. And then um, I think, uh, who was that? Memphis. They came in with the Gasol trade. Mm -hmm. um, they, and so the last minute, they threw me in that deal. So I ended up going to Memphis instead of going to Orlando. And um, we, we wanted to get traded. But uh, we knew that they were going to have a chance to win the championship. But. It's always a risk. You never know if you're gonna do it. So I'd rather I mean, it, you know, go so for many the other money. factors that go into that, man. So many other factors. Exactly. So so so, you, um, so yeah. obviously so you said that was your uh you were going to a contract season, contract summer, right? So yes. how was the how was it in Memphis? Like did you play well? What was that experience like? So I started off um I started off a little rocky. Uh, I was probably trying to do too much, trying to showcase too much at one time. Mm -hmm. So I started off a little rocky. And then um, a couple of guys had ended up getting injured. So uh, I was pretty much playing with, like, the backups and, you know, other players that are trying to make the team. So I, I got to start about, I would say, about 15 games. Um, and I ended up exposure. Definitely. I ended up getting three triple doubles towards the end of the year. Um, uh -huh. Had some some big games. And, uh, you know, I played pretty well towards the end of the year. And uh, 
I was able to sign with Dallas. And were y'all a playoff team or no? With Memphis? No, we weren't. We weren't a playoff team. Um, it was pretty much them trying to see who they were going to keep around for the next year. Mm-hmm. And, so uh, so how, 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 what, what is the mental transition going from a team like Toronto, you know, in the playoffs every year, um, you know, in the Eastern Conference Finals and having success to go into a team like that where you're struggling every night, you're losing and it's just not the same kind of environment. Like, how, how do you stay, like, it's like locked in and like, how was the whole experience for you? Like I said, it was it was a contract year, so I was totally locked in. I wasn't being mm-hmm. selfish, but it was more so like, yo, it's time to – you're not making the playoffs, so it's yeah. you know, it's not so much team ball. It's more of showing what you can do, but also keeping it within the team, right? Like, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah, of course. So, of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, you want to go out there and showcase who you are, you know? You want exactly. to go out there and look good and obviously try to help the team win some games. I mean, that winning matters sure. a lot in the NBA also. You know, your value kind of goes from here to there if, you, if you're a proven winner, so – just yeah. that whole process. That's how that's how that thing works for you. Um, for sure. I mean, I, I know how. I mean, we. I think we won in probably like maybe six games when I played for Cleveland, man. So like, <laughs> it, it was it was hard, bro. It was hard, man. Like yeah. we had we had Kevin who was out most of the season. Uh, Tristan was in and out some of the season. So it was like I, I ended up starting like four games. I, I played a bunch of bunch of minutes. Uh, had some success. It was obviously one of the best best moments of my life that whole season. Yeah. But the winning thing, man, like it, it was just hard, bro. It was hard to kind of adjust to. It was kind of hard. Yeah, it was, it was very hard, actually. You should never get loose, used to uh, losing. Like, no. Some never. some teams are like that, though. They're, they're so used to losing. Like, they're, they're numb to it. But mm-hmm. coming mm-hmm. from winning situations like that, that's never a good thing. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean coming from a good organization like Toronto, I mean, I, I guess right. it kind of like it kind of just builds your mental, you know, to kind of be against being complacent and being used to For losing. Sure. For sure. Yeah. All right. So uh, you're in Atlanta now. You got training yeah. camp on Monday. Uh, a very exciting young Atlanta Hawks team who's had success last season, last season in the playoffs. You're one of the veteran guys on this team. What are you looking forward to most of the season? Um, really just trying to add to their, you know, their their roster. Um, they had such a great year making it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, mm-hmm. so I just feel like. You know, it's going to be spots in a season where I'm going to be, you know, relied on heavily. So I just have to be ready for that moment whenever it is. Um, if it ever happens, I just have to be ready for that moment. Um, and just bring my veteran leadership that I uh, gained over my what would be now seven year career. So I wouldn't say I'm expecting anything for myself. Um, but I just think that but then by them bringing me here, it means that uh, they value me in some sense. So mm-hmm. I just have to be ready and prove that uh they're right on bringing me here mm-hmm. so like you said you, you're your seventh year in the nba looking back on i guess say your first nba game what advice would you give yourself after knowing everything you know now what, what would you tell yourself um so much what would i tell myself uh probably to just keep working and keep your mental your mental uh, in the right place because it's a lot of times uh, I would say, you know, my first two years I was kind of checked out because I feel like I should be playing. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, I'm coming out of college. I just had a great year and I'm not playing a lot. Yeah. So I kind of checked out a little bit, stopped working as hard as I could have, but um, it worked out. But yeah, I would just tell myself to just keep working hard and stay mentally locked in. Well, was Toronto a place where you could like, be easily distracted. Like, I know, I know, nightlife is is it's big there. I mean, it's it's one of the best NBA cities that most people don't know about. Yes, yes, we was. I don't want to say who all went and what, but um, <laughs> I know how I it definitely, is. Man. <laughs> I definitely had a great time in Toronto. Um, but no, they I, as far as on the court and stuff, they don't let you. They don't let you slack off. They have a good program as far as a uh, sneaking to the G League, making you mm-hmm. come in early, stay late. So as much as fun as I did have, I was still putting in the work and still grinding. But um, I did, See, definitely man, had a great time. M- m- most young people in the NBA, like they don't really understand how to balance all of that. And Facts. that can make or break you as a player. Like yes. I, I, you can get your career started off on the wrong foot or you can 
obviously like you you were like an older guy when you were drafted right yeah. how old were you when you, yeah. when you were a rookie 23 23 yeah so so you understand like all right i'm not gonna go yeah. out every night and, and do this and do that and then come to practice yeah. you know smelling like alcohol and <laughs> doing all type of crazy stuff but some young people they don't they don't know like so they don't understand they don't that. they you, you yeah. kind of feel i guess vulnerable not vulnerable you, you feel um invincible as a young guy like oh i can do yeah. anything i want and there are no repercussions but you know as an older guy you kind of have that knowledge and, and how to act um but i'm not gonna lie I, I came in like that like once and the strength coach was like like he kind of like checked me on it uh -huh. and ever since then i made sure that never happened again but um mm -hmm. you know he was cool about it he was like yeah i know how it is you're not playing you know you but i like, don't make this a habit so yeah i definitely needed him to to tell me because some some uh employer they probably will do that and go tell you know the front office oh yo he smoked oh, for hall. sure for sure so he was definitely cool about that um but yeah i just i had a great time out there i would definitely say Man, we 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 uh we played in charlotte one night on a wednesday and we played uh -huh. in toronto on a friday and we flew in on Wednesday night and Tristan's obviously Canadian. So yes, yes. he had a big thing planned for us, man. It, it, was, it was one of my favorite nights in the NBA, like outside of basketball. It was unbelievable in Toronto. Yes. A lot of people yeah. do not know that. They just yeah, think it's it, Canada, it, but. Nah, Toronto, Toronto is lit, man. I love, I loved it there. I don't want to say too much. They going to, uh, <laughs> they going to, they going to know it's a hidden gym. Yeah. <laughs> I want to keep it a hidden gym, you know? Absolutely, man. All right, well, I got I got some uh, rapid fire questions for you before we finish up. Let's do it. All right, let's jump right into it. Favorite basketball shoes to play in of all time? Um, Jordan Twelves. Favorite casual shoes of all time? Uh, Air Force Ones. Uh, one person you would want to dunk on the most, past or present? Matumbo. Mm, nice. <laughs> most, mem most memorable moment in your career? Um, being drafted uh, to the NBA. Your uh, what's your go-to song or artist at the moment? Um, right now I love Rock Wave. Pass or shoot? Pass. Apple or Android? Apple. PlayStation or Xbox? Xbox. Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Um, Michael Jordan. <laughs> nice <laughs> movie theater or netflix and chill netflix and chill for sure nice nice all right man that's all i got for you man i, I really I appreciate clarify, taking the time I clarify out that. Uh, sorry i want to cut you off no nah, go ahead like lebron i still got to play against him so i'm not saying he to go right now you know what i mean like but but, I but do you do you think like when you when you watch him man like do you think like it's comparable um when C retire, I'll I'll touch on that. I can't. Yeah, we'll revisit that back. I gotta up. play against this dude. Like, you know what I mean? I can't be following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta play against him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jordan for now until his career is over. Okay, I I kind of get a we'll feeling that, you, that you're gonna change your answer, but okay. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but like I was saying, man, I, I I thank you for taking the time out to join the show, man. You're a great guest. Glad to have you. I wish you nothing but success and and a great season in Atlanta, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate you guys having me, and uh, I hope you have a great season in uh, Germany, y'all. Awesome.